Today I'm joined by Ken Dobies, and we are going to read What Happens to Our Trash by Day G. Ward and illustrated by Paul Meisel. What happens to our trash? Have you ever looked inside a garbage can? Hold your nose. It might be stinky. There are all kinds of things in there. It is all stuff people have thrown away. It's trash. A lot of what people throw away is paper and cardboard. Some of it is plastic, bottles, packages, and even toys. People throw away TVs and bicycles, metal cans and glass bottles, furniture and clothing, food scraps, grass clippings, and oily rags. Some of it is so gooey and grimy, it's hard to tell what it is. What do you throw away? In the United States, we make a lot of trash. We make more than any other country. We make almost five pounds per person every single day. Most of our trash goes to a landfill. Landfills are areas set aside for storing trash. Big cities usually have at least one. The amount of trash produced in America annually can fill up enough garbage trucks lined up end to end to reach the moon. Putting waste into a landfill is different than just placing it in piles and leaving it. That would smell bad and be unsafe. It would attract animals and flies. It could make people sick. Landfills are made to keep people safe from the trash. Landfills have clay and plastic layers. This helps keep harmful liquids from leaking away. The trash gets covered with dirt each day. When trash sits in a landfill, it makes gases. Pipes at the landfill capture these gases, keeping them from polluting the air. One kind of gas the pipes capture is called methane. People burn this methane to make electricity for their houses, schools, and office buildings. My project shows how methane from landfills is turned into electricity. Some trash is too dangerous to go straight into a landfill. Batteries, some cleaners, and compact fluorescent light bulbs contain chemicals that can hurt people. They are called household hazardous waste. You should not put this kind of trash into your garbage can at home. Many cities have drop-off sites for household hazardous waste. This is where workers place the waste in containers that get sealed up tight. Now the household hazardous waste can go safely into the landfill. Someday, the landfill will run out of space for more trash. When a landfill becomes full, workers carefully cover it. They plant grass on it. The landfill becomes a park. It might even become a golf course. The trash is still down below. It takes some kinds of trash a long, long time to break down. Hundreds or thousands of years even. Sometimes it's hard for cities to find a place to put trash. Landfills take up a lot of space and they can't be near people's homes or where they might harm wildlife. Some cities send them their trash to faraway landfills, but that costs a lot of money. To save space in landfills, some cities burn their trash. Heat energy from the fire can be used to turn turbines. As the turbines turn, they make electricity. That puts the trash to good use, but burning trash causes problems too. It can pollute the air and it's expensive. They have to take the garbage away and barges. That is a lot of garbage. There are cars powered by only by electricity. Whether we bury it or burn it, 
Keeping people safe from trash costs a lot of money. The more trash we make, the more trouble it can be. So what can we do to stop throwing away so much stuff? We can reduce, reuse, and recycle. To reduce means to make smaller. What if each person made only four pounds of trash every single day? Or maybe only three? Landfills wouldn't fill up so quickly. There would be less pollution in the air from burning trash. Making less trash is not hard to do. But to do it, we have to change some habits. We can bring our own bags to the store and use them instead of throwaway bags. We can buy a big bag of snacks instead of little bags. The little ones make more trash. Snacks for lunch can go into a reusable container from home. We can use rechargeable batteries instead of the disposable kind. To reuse means to use something more than once. What kinds of things can we reuse? A lot of the trash in landfills is old containers, but many of those containers could have been used again. Clean boxes are useful for organizing toys and making crafts. You can reuse plastic food containers for storing leftovers. Just make sure they're clean first. When we use plastic forks, spoons, knives, cups, and plates, we can wash them and use them again. Used office paper often has printing only on one side. We can print on it again or draw on the blank side. Some things we throw away might be useful to somebody else. We can take toys and clothes we don't use anymore to the thrift store. Some kinds of trash can be turned to something else that is useful. Yard waste and food waste are like that. Yard waste is from plants. Grass clippings, branches, and leaves are all examples of yard waste. Food waste is from meals. When you make a meal, some parts of the food don't get used. Things such as eggshells, melon rinds, and apple cores all go into the trash. After the meal, food is sometimes left on people's plates. That's all trash. When yard waste and food waste decay, they become plant food. That's called fertilizer. Making fertilizer from yard and food waste is called composting. Some cities collect yard and food waste for composting. Does your town have compost piles? You can ask your parents or teachers or check online to find out. Even if your town does not have compost piles, your yard and food waste doesn't have to go to the landfill. You can set up a compost pile at home. What if we could take the plastic from a bottle and make carpet for the floor? Or what if we could turn an old newspaper into a new cereal box? We can. It's called recycling. To recycle means to use the materials from one thing to make something else. Some countries recycle almost half their trash. Why can't we? Lots of items can be recycled, such as plastic containers, glass bottles, and metal cans. We can recycle many kinds of paper, cardboard boxes, printer paper, and newspapers. Magazines, catalogs, and phone books, even ads that come in the mail. At the recycling plant, all the stuff for recycling gets sorted. Machines squash it into big bales. The bales are so big that forklifts have to move them around. Some bales are made of newspaper. Some are cardboard. There are bales of soda pop cans. Others are made of squashed plastic bottles. Workers at the recycling plant sell the bales to companies. The companies use the material in them to make new things. Items such as old computers, TVs, cell phones, and printers are called e-waste. We shouldn't put e-waste in the trash. How you should recycle your e-waste depends upon where you live. When you are ready to throw a computer, call the company that made it. Many computer companies will take back old computers for recycling. Workers at a recycling 
plant can pull out parts that can be reused. Those parts can be put into new electronic devices. But not all of the parts can be used again. Some have harmful chemicals in them. The workers know how to remove the chemicals. Just like household hazardous waste, like the fluorescent light bulbs and batteries, chemicals from e-waste go into containers that keep people safe from them. Where will your trash go? Will it go to the recycling plant? Will it go to the compost pile? Will it get buried underground? It's almost impossible to make no trash at all. But if we reduce, reuse, and recycle, we will make a lot less than we do now. And a lot less trash will go into the landfill. That's one great way to help make where we live a cleaner and greener place. Thank you so much for joining us for story time with the scientists. Have a great day.